Hi, my name is Amy and I am going to demonstrate how to properly take care of your skin um, post-surgical procedures and also post-laser or post-chemical peel. That does make a difference in how you're going to take care of your skin afterwards. Um, just to touch on the, the things that we've done for my procedures, we have done a full face fat transfer, we have done a short incision neck lift, uh, facelift with neck, extended neck lift. Um, we have also done an upper and lower blepharoplasty um, and a skin pinch underneath. And we've also done a lateral brow lift and the finishing touch was the contour TRL. So let me go ahead and demonstrate how you're gonna take care of your skin. Really important to purchase some four x four cotton squares. These are really, really great. Um, they're not gonna be like a, a cotton ball where the filaments can come apart and get stuck in that oozy crustiness that happens in the first few days after a peel. It's really gonna be gentle on the skin uh, and not, not, it's not gonna leave anything behind. So it's gonna really help you clean a little more easily. You're gonna need um, some Q-tips. You're gonna need the Lubrifresh, which we provide for you in your Take Care Home Kit. And we also have these drops too. When you, um, they're Refresh Plus drops, they're really helping hydrate your eyes um, because you will have a little dryness accompanied with the procedures that I had done. And uh, then I have a towel, very clean towel, and again, the four by four squares. Um, I have an occlusive agent, which is a laser balm. You can use Aquaphor, but for me, Aquaphor irritates my skin because there's lanolin in it. Um, so I'm going to use this laser, laser balm, and it's just gonna really keep the skin hydrated so that it doesn't crack um, and doesn't dry out. It's really important not to let the skin dry out because if you do, you can actually create damage like hyperpigmentation, hypopigmentation, or scarring. So we really want to keep the skin super hydrated while you're healing. The reason why this water vinegar solution is so important is because it's going to balance the pH of your skin and leave you less prone to bacterial infections. So I have distilled water um, here and I have the water vinegar solution here and that consists of one half a tablespoon of white vinegar combined with one cup of distilled water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my distilled water, put those in there, and I put two in each hand so there's some extra padding there um, so it's more comfortable on the skin. In the beginning stages, you may have to use some light padding rather than rubbing because your skin, again, is gonna be very delicate and sensitive. Um, I really like the Revali Skin Facial Cleanser. I love this cleanser because you can use it immediately after the procedure. When your skin is oozing and really crusty, it really helps. There's anti-inflammatories in there, there's hydrators in there, so it's not gonna dry your skin out. And then you can do your vinegar water after that. So I would do the cleanser first, then go ahead and balance your pH with the vinegar water solution, rinse it off with the distilled water, and then you continue on with these next steps that I'm going to show you. Okay, so I'm gonna take my Q-tip and I'm gonna go ahead and put on the hydro hydrogen peroxide on my sutures. and also on my eyes and around my eyes. So you really want to be careful. I actually will dab a little on my hand to make sure it's not real drippy. And now my face is nice and clean, so now it's time to hydrate everything. You want to keep your sutures really hydrated because when it's time for them to come out, like it is for me today, you want them nice and lubricated so they slip out really easily, especially around the eyes. So for around the eyes, I'm going to use my Lubrifresh.
Okay, and then my face is nice and clean. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put my Aquaphor on. Um, I like to put a little bit on the back of my hand to keep the product clean, so I'm using the other end of my stick. So you can use a Q-tip. Or you can use your fingertips, which I find to be much easier. Perfect. So lastly, you're going to have to use a head wrap after your first day back to the office. They're going to give you a fresh head wrap. Um, and I like to use the Aquaphor to my advantage when I'm trying to put mine on. And I'm using those same 4x4 squares. I'm just unfolding them in half and placing them on the skin um, and then putting the wrap on. The big deal that people have had with the wrap is that they're putting it on sometimes too tight and they're starting to get a little itchy in certain areas. So you really don't want it to go around the face more than one, one and a half times or twice at the most. If you're finding a lot of itchiness, it's probably because you have it on too tight. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. And this is what we'll be giving you. It has Velcro on one end. Okay, so I have it on really loose and then I just kind of push out the edges so it's comfortable and flip the bottom and if you feel like it's getting a little itchy just kind of give it a little pull downward and you can always unvelcro it and adjust it so that it's loose and comfortable. You just really want to keep them covered um, for that five days time when you come back and have your one day post-op um, and you just want to keep it nice and clean and keep the elements out so we're not prone to bacterial infection um, or any sun getting into it. Um, we're protecting the scars or the sutures from, from becoming scars. Um, so I hope this all helps and uh, good luck with everything.